Hello. Some of you may have received an ePlan project and somebody just sent you something like this kind of email where they said, you know what, I saved you a project and it is a ZW1 file. This is actually a backup file. So what do you do with the backup file? If you can find it, you can double click on it. If you have ePlan installed, then it will, of course, restore it. If you have ePlan installed and you have it started, it looks a little bit like this. Of course, we have different tutorials you can look through, but primarily you are trying this time to restore a project. Open the menu here, Project Restore, and point the backup directory to the folder that was actually mentioned. As you can see here, I have some projects downloaded. Uh, I will go straight into the location that was actually mentioned on that email and under the folder, and I'm just pointing to the folder itself. I'm not pointing to anything else. I'm just pointing here to the folder. And inside the folder, you can see here, we have a couple of these uh, projects. Now, the project that was mentioned in this email here will appear in the list that is there if you have more than one ZW1 file. Now, of course, here, as anyone, you can sort by dates um, and you can find the latest one or the one that you're looking for. You point on the ZW1 file that was mentioned in the email. And then here is a target directory. This is basically where do you want to explode or open this project. Now, this specific one, I will create in a new folder. I'm going to call this folder video tutorial so we can find it and we will see what actually gets exploded. Okay. Now, once this is done, you can rename the folder or the version or the name of the project here and simply click on the OK button. In some cases, you get extra dialogues that pop up and they are related to some comparisons we do with our master data or actually sometimes the version that, in which the original file was saved in. Here we can see the file was saved in version 2.7 and I am right now in 2.8 as you can see at the top there. So I will just click yes and this will convert the original file so it will create a copy with a certain date. We will look at it a little bit later and it will update the file into a version 2.8 workable project. Once the transfer is done, a second uh, comparison will be uh, run by ePlan, and it has to do with the master data itself. So what is master data? Master data could be a form, could be a plot frame, a symbol, an image, anything that is typically shared across the company. And here in this particular case, I may have it updated. I may have an updated table of content, a bill of material, and then this actually pops up and it says, do you want to update the master data now? If you answer yes, the bill of material, the original table of content will be replaced with the newest one. If you answer no, you can always come back and do the update later, but at least you will get the original project as it was. So it was successfully restored. Here is my project. Of course, I get my schematic pages and I can dig in exactly where I want. Just double click on the page and I can start editing and it's all fine. As you know, ePlan, it's a bunch of symbols. Uh, when you align objects with each other, the auto connecting lines, so all the lines you see here are created automatically. Every symbol is attached with a number of properties. Some of these properties are identifying. Some of them are just purely descriptive. Some of them are actually in the purpose of filling out a bill of material. So I have different types of properties here. And this is true for also complex objects like this black box here, which only is represented with a box and some device connection points. Um, and, and of course, at the end of the day, we are generating some 
reports and if I do any changes, these reports will reflect exactly what I do. But these reports are generated automatically, so you do not have to change them. So if you ever have some redlinings to do, update some uh, data inside this project, all you have to do is really filter this down to the default schematics. So these are the schematics that actually are in this particular project here. They are structured and grouped in different sections. We can clearly see what is associated to enclosure number one, enclosure number two. Um, of course, when associated to enclosure number two, the objects inside the page are mostly also associated to here, the mounting location A2. So uh, this is a bit different from uh, regular tools where there is no link between the page and the components here. There is a certain link. Whatever the page attribute are, is associated to, so here mounting location A2, this attribute is part of the identifying portion of the device and therefore it is automatically transferred onto the individual component inside it. We have of course other drawing tricks in, in here, so I'll invite you to look it up. Now let's take a look at the files themselves. So here very quickly, the files that were generated, so remember we did put it here under was it d temp and then we said okay we want a folder we had created a specific folder for this uh, specific video here tutorial and this is now the project that was uh, created so you get an elk file and an edb folder these two together are actually eplan projects uh, these are special file formats that uh, belong to ePlan. Any kind of document is most likely in here that was created in the past, but this is all controllable through ePlan. But this is actually the ePlan project. And this came out of the, the original ZW1 file. If you have any questions, feel free to contact us, any one of us. So here you can see we are in several different countries, you know, select a country you have uh, purchased your ePlan and they will help you go through this.